Hey there, mushroom fans. I want to do a brief addendum to a video I published yesterday about uh, the green spored parasol mushroom. Uh, the scientific name is Chlorophyllum molybdites. And uh, this mushroom is poisonous. It won't kill you, but it will make you uh, violently ill, you know, anywhere between six and 24 hours. And so it's really, uh, you know, an unpleasant experience to be avoided. And as I was talking about this mushroom, uh, I explained that the reason that this can be such a problem is that there are some really nice edible parasol mushrooms in the Macrolepiata genus that are sometimes, uh, you know, these are mistaken for those delicious edible mushrooms. And so I want to uh, share with you a couple of these Macrolepiata uh, edible and tasty uh, um, parasol mushrooms and show you a couple of differences between them and the green spored dudes so that you don't accidentally, um, you know, uh, end up losing your lunch uh, by by eating this mushroom accidentally sometime. So anyway, this is uh, one of my parasol mushrooms in the Macrolepiata genus. As you can see, these are fairly similar fruiting bodies. And so, you know, you need to have a little bit of knowledge and experience with different parts of a mushroom and what to observe uh, to tell the difference between the two of them. But the main thing that you can notice right away as I tip these mushrooms over is the gill color is very, very different. So these mushrooms are mature and that makes this difference really easily. So the green spored parasol, as it matures, there are green spores that start to turn these gills, uh, sort of this, you know, greenish, um, uh, you know, tinged green, and then they'll kind of go gray green, mossy green, as, uh, you know, the mushroom fully wears itself out. Macrolepiata uh, parasol mushrooms, on the other hand, have uh, pale gills and they're sort of a like creamy color, a little bit of pink here. And the pink you're actually seeing is more of a staining reaction. It's not very uh, distinct on this particular specimen, but I'll, I'll show you a couple of others and maybe we'll see a little more. Uh, but, uh, you know, Macrolepiata oftentimes has sort of a reddish staining uh, stuff going on. But the main thing is, you know, you're looking at a cap and stem mushroom that has scales on top that are brownish in color. It's kind of a, you know, pale, creamy colored fruiting body. Both of them have rings on the stem and you'll find them growing on the ground. But again, once you flip them over, green spored parasol is very, very different in appearance. This is about as dark uh, as, the, as the gills uh, for a macrolepiata mushroom would get because they have this sort of creamy colored uh, spore print. So, um, there are a couple of other features that are not as consistent for telling them apart, but I'll go through them really quickly. Uh, first of all, with your um, uh, green spore parasol mushroom, oftentimes your gill, or excuse me, the scales that are on it are a little bit more peely and flaky and, uh, you know, easier to, to peel off than uh, your uh, Macrolepiata. So you can see the scales here, they come off fairly easily, but they're more scurfy, they're more fluffy, whereas these are more like individual little peels of tissue. And again, these are, um, you know, over time, as you observe mushrooms time and time again, they're always radically different. Lots of mushrooms are mutants, but, uh, you know, these are, so these are uh, things that you are, you'll see patterns of, but is not always the case. So anyway, oftentimes, are uh, chlorophyllum it's a little bit easier to remove those uh, uh, scales or the scales are a little bit more like one piece that you can just sort of peel off instead of the little floofy bits uh, additionally, oftentimes the um, green spore parasols are a little bit more umbonate and they have like a more of a nipple up in the in the middle here. So I have a couple of other uh, of these parasol, you know, delicious macrolepiatas. They do have like a little, uh, you know, bump in the middle, but it is not nearly as pronounced. So you have less of a sort of conical shape and more of a, you know, um, an oval on top. Uh, we do also have... Let's see, I'm going to show you the younger specimens here. So this is the mushroom uh, of my collection that probably has the darkest colored gills. So you can see this is really fairly mature at this point. Uh, but also you see some, and not a lot, like it's not super distinctive, some reddening here. And again, that's not always the case with Macrolepiata, but very frequently you have uh, sort of reddish staining. I'm going to cut into the mushroom itself, see if I get any... Uh, Reaction, let's slice them in half here. Okay, I'm gonna say we have a little bit of activity here, but it's fairly faint. So I'm gonna set this to the side for the moment, see if it picks up momentum at all. Uh, both of these uh, species, you know, do have big felty rings on the stem. 
Um, but the stems also have some differences that uh, I very frequently notice. So when you're looking at chlorophyllum, the stem is uh, oftentimes a little bit darker brown on the bottom and lighter as it uh, sort of ascends. But also it's sort of, um, you know, not, not necessarily smooth. Like you can see some peeling happening here, but it is rather smooth. Whereas what you have, and this is uh, probably the best uh, example of it, or maybe the younger one even is, is slightly better. Let me find the absolute baby. Aha, here you are. Okay. So if you're looking at a baby Lepiata mushroom before it's even opened up, they look like little, you know, extended chess pieces or, you know, uh, something kind of goofy like that. But, uh, they often have, uh, have sort of a, uh, texturized, almost looks like stretch marks along the stem. And that is consistent, you know, as the mushroom gets older and older, it's a little bit more difficult to see, uh, as as they mature like toward the top but this is a sort of you know streaky difference uh, in in sort of appearance that really isn't often the case I don't know if I've ever seen a chlorophyllum that had this sort of stretch mark appearance so again these are mushrooms that like if you eat chlorophyllum accidentally it will not kill you but it is a very deeply unpleasant experience macrolepiata has a number of different species that are quite delightful and edible but I say also macrolepiata because it can be very difficult difficult to get the individuals in there. So as you can probably infer, if you are relatively new to mushroom hunting, this is slightly more advanced material. Uh, you know, once you start to move into mushrooms with gills and then mushrooms with pale gills, you're uh, ramping up closer and closer to the physical appearance of some mushrooms that are very dangerous and toxic. And so that's a lot of the reason why like mushroom, uh, you know, beginner uh, materials oftentimes will point you toward uh, species like chanterelles or hedgehog mushrooms, hedgehog mushrooms, I put the emphasis on the wrong syllable, hedgehog mushrooms in the hidden M genus, one of my absolute favorites. And the reason for that is, you know, they are abundant, easy to recognize, but also very distinct. And uh, so look a lot, you know, you don't have a lot of situations where we're like, you have to turn them over and in almost every respect, they look the same, except one will make you barf for a lot of hours and one will, you know, make you a very uh, delightful dinner host and uh, very coveted in your social circles. So anyway, I um, hope you have good luck finding both of these mushrooms. They grow in, uh, you know, yards and leaf litter everywhere. So it's always a treat to see them uh, out and about in the world. And so I hope you have an opportunity to see and observe both side by side, because that's also super helpful when you're trying to bake in like what a lookalike and what the real deal, real, well, what you're actually hoping to find is, you know, you have mushrooms that look in many, many ways very similar, but you start to unpack the differences and uh, fairly quickly it becomes apparent you're dealing with totally different characters. I hope you have a good day. I'll see you next time.